Alright, so today we're going to talk about the calculus of variations and the fundamental lemma of the calculus of variations. So what exactly is this branch of calculus? Well, it's a branch of calculus that focuses on minimizing something called functionals. Functionals are just going to be functions whose inputs are also functions. So that seems a little bit circular, but I promise it makes sense. So take, for example, the arc length formula. So right here, this is a functional because for any curve y, y of x, this arc length integral right here is going to give you some number. So this arc length integral gives you some something in the real numbers. So if you imagine drawing this out, then you would have between any two points A and B, you could draw any number of continuous functions, because they have to be integrable, and each of these curves would have a number associated with them, this number being the length of the line. So sometimes, uh, well, a lot of times, especially in physics, we're going to want to minimize or maximize these functionals. But for that term to make any sense, we need to be able to determine how close two functions are. So for a functional j, two functions f and g would be close to each other if their difference after applying that functional would be close to zero. So just to make that a little bit more concrete, if we took two curves, like maybe this one, and then one that kind of straddled along that curve, and we use this arc length functional from earlier, so let's say this length right here is one. And maybe this length right here is 1.1. .1. Now we could also choose another function that would be pretty close to it by just having one that's even closer to this curve. But the idea is that if you want to find how close two functions are, you just apply that functional. So for each of these lines, you would compute their arc length integral and then compare that number that got spit out. Because any functional is going to output a real number. So you can always determine if they're close, two functions are close, by looking at the output of their functionals. So now we're going to talk about probably the most important lemma or proof in the calculus of variations because it's going to help us prove a lot of things. So although this seems like it comes out of the blue, in the next video we'll actually run into our first application of this theorem. So the theorem states that if some integral i from x1 to x2 of f of x times eta of x dx is equal to zero for any continuously differentiable function eta such that eta of x1 and eta of x2 is zero and continuous function f of x then f of x has to be zero for all x in that region so if we wanted to draw this out then what we would be saying is that if you were taking some integral between two points x1 and x2, then if this integral is zero for any eta of x, so that it that eta of x is zero between these two endpoints, 
For this integral to be 0, then f of x had to be 0 at all these points. Now, you may see, say, oh, that's pretty obvious, but we need to actually prove it. You can't just take something for granted because it seems obvious. So for this proof, we're going to use contradiction. So if you want to prove something by contradiction, you get the first part to negate the second part. So if you negate the second part, you get, you would suppose instead that f of x is not zero. So it doesn't matter if we say it's positive or negative. So we'll just say it's positive just because we have to choose something. So we'll say that f of x is greater than zero for some point a in that domain. So let's say we've got x1 right here, x2 right here, and we've got our point A right here. And then since we're doing proof by contradiction, we get this first part for free. So we get to assume that eta of x is some function that disappears at the endpoints, and that f of x is continuous. Now the second part, f of x is continuous, is going to be very important because since f of x is in continuous, then if it's positive at a, then it's going to have to be positive in some neighborhood around a. So in other words, it would have to be something like this. And then we'll say that f of x is zero outside this region because we only um, really get to assume that it's positive at one point. So by it being continuous, we know it would have to be continuous in some region around that point. Positive, I mean. Then we'll label this region as A1 and A2. <clears throat> so to find the contradiction that we're looking for, we need to find one function eta where that zero integral property is not satisfied. So if we let eta of x equal to this function right here, so first off, it disappears at these endpoints right here. So it's this eta is going to be zero here and zero here. And then we'll suppose it's positive. We know it's positive because each of these terms is squared, so you're multiplying two positive numbers on that domain. And then we'll say that this eta of x is zero outside this region. So it's zero from here to here and here to here. So then that integral from earlier then looks like this. Since f, so this function on the inside right here, was equal to 0, and eta is equal to 0 in these two regions right here, then that integral just becomes the integral from a1 to a2 of f of x and then eta of x. But eta of x is positive in this region, and so is f of x. So this integral has to be greater than zero. But then we get a contradiction because that integral was supposed to be zero at the beginning. Because since we're doing a proof by contradiction, we're supposed to assume the first part. So in other words, our guess that f of x was not equal to zero for some point in that domain was wrong. So then f of x has to be zero for all x in this region. Then we have the theorem proved. And this is going to be really important in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you have any questions. See you in the next video.